English Premiership action now on Match of the Day, while in Scotland, Sports Scene featuring Scottish football. <laughs> Reporting Scotland understands that trouble has broken out in Manchester prior to tonight's UEFA Cup final. Chick Young has the details. Yes, Rona, let's not beat about the bush. Let's be brutally honest. A tiny, minuscule, small minority of persons unknown who are out to cause trouble have infiltrated the Rangers' support and are giving it loudly here in Manchester. No one knows who these people are. How you doing, Chick? How you doing, Billy? <laughs> these infiltrators must be rooted out. Get any tickets, Chick? No, I haven't any time. Go and see Big Sammy over there. <laughs> this is Chick Young reporting Scotland. Oh, boys, give a left day. <laughs> Well, another disastrous day for Arthur Boric ends with a big goalkeeper throwing away his gloves. But at least he hasn't done anything to offend the opposition fans. <laughs> Am I interested in our shaving? No. Prefer to get mine waxed. <laughs> Why is Barry Ferguson an automatic first pick? Oh, yeah. He's the most experienced player we have here. He's won the most honours of all the players. And if he doesn't play, I don't want him to sack me. <laughs> What's the minute of applause for? Did somebody famous die? No. We hold a minute of applause every week the players get their wages in time. Well, you know, to be honest, you know, it's been hard this year. You know, it's been, it's been awful hard, you know. In fact, I'd even go as far as to say it's been that hard, you know, it's, it's not been easy, you know. And of course, criticism does hurt. You know, like the other day when I was walking down Union Street and some loudmouth is pointing at me and going, hey, Jimmy, look at the state of your fake tan and, hey, Calderwood, you're having a bad hair day. And, you know, that, that really hurts, you know. Especially when the guy shouting at is Donald Trump, you know. <laughs> John Mackay and this is Scotland Today at tea time tonight today with all the new sport and things that make you go jings across the whole of Scotland. Apart from the places that don't get Scotland Today but who gives a toss about them. <laughs> Before we rush really fast through the news to get to the sport let's have a preview of that sport from the STV nervous sports correspondent Raman Barwaj. So what have you got coming up for us in the sport, Roman? Uh, well, John, coming up in tonight's sport, exclusively in this channel, I'll be speaking exclusively to George Burley, who will be telling me he'll be glad if Scotland don't make it to South Africa in 2010, because Africa is where lions and crocodiles live, and, and the things eat you. We've also got Andy Murray giving us his thoughts on Scottish rugby. Frank Haddon reveals his plans for tennis and... Thanks, Roman. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Now, with the sport, it's over to Roman. And Roman, a big night for sport. <laughs> y y yes, John, it's, it's, it's a big night for, for sport. In, in, indeed it is, John. Uh, well, folks, it's, it's, it's a big night for sport and... <laughs> And that's, that's all the sport, and, and maybe such not a, a big nick for sport after all, John. <laughs> Interesting stuff, Roman. And Roman, thanks.
Looking forward to that. Now, with the news in the East, Kelly Anne Marie Therese McGee, the news in the West, Debbie Lee Hannah Montana Gilchrist, and the news on the roof, Bernard Ponsonby. Bernard. John. Bernard. John. Bernard. John. Bernard Ponsonby. Thanks. Interesting stuff. And shocking development, Bernard. And Bernard, thanks. Uh, Louise White, what have you got for us? Well, John, if I was to say the name Sean Batty to you, what six-letter word beginning with W and ending in R would you immediately think of? Well, Louise, I'd probably say... Weather. So here is Sean Batty. Oh, pure thanks, Louise. Yoo-hoo, everybody. Well, what can we expect tomorrow? Well, plenty weather, that's for sure. It's going to be rainy at Rangers, frosty at Falkirk, drink at Dens, and a bit parky at Parkhead. So, if you're playing football tomorrow for, say, Rangers or Wraith Rovers or Ross County, don't forget to put on a big woolly hat, a big woolly scarf, big thick woolly socks, a big woolly jumper, and a pair of big woolly wellies. And watch you don't get them all slabbers from your pie. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. And remember, if you want to make the news headlines, you can send us your pictures from your phone or email or text us at STV. And we'll ignore them, as we always do. John. Thanks, Louise. Thanks, Scottish BAFTA nominee Sean Batty. No, I can't understand it either. <laughs> uh, this news just in. Authorities are set to confront a bunch of thugs who have been terrorising the country. A Scottish police force select will play the MSP football team next year. I'm John Mackay. You're not. Good night. <laughs>
It's worse than that, you know. It's, it's like a gorilla, you know. A gibbon. Or even an orangutan, you know. And King Kong, you know, he's back there too, you know. It's a big chimp's tea party, you know. Let me tell you, it's very difficult to get a victory at the highest level when there are chimps having a tea party in your back, you know. And, and all that tea sloshing about, you're never going to keep a clean sheet, you know. Welcome to Scottish Football's Celebrity Come Dine With Me where four celebrities are on a mission to host a dinner party, mark each other's meals, poke about each other's houses, bitch about their hosts behind their backs, then rack up the scores and see who wins the thousand pounds cash prize. Tonight it's the turn of our final host, Ronnie the Corrie, who is immediately put under pressure when one of his guests arrives two hours early. Where's the birds? You're too early. I know. And let's face it, it's not like me to be premature. <laughs> I'll just make my cell at home till the others arrive. Ronnie's meal is traditional sausage. Scottish fare. And just keep that bubbling away there. Homemade sausage roll and spaghetti hoops. <laughs> <laughs> For the pastry, I don't use imported flour. I use the flower of Scotland. Come on! <laughs> Next to arrive is Jackie Bird, who's been checking her medical records on the internet. Hi there, sorry I'm late, but I was reading the news. And can we hurry this along? Because I'll be reading it again in 20 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Guest, legendary Rangers striking legend Philip Sibo is passing round the melon ball. Sibo passed the melon balls. Oops! That's a surprise, eh? Sibo no control on his balls. <laughs> Dinner is served. Come on! Once around the table, the conversation turns to intellectual matters. So, Philip. Do you get many lumbers with a coupon like yours? <laughs> Meanwhile, across the table, Jackie and Ronnie are discussing more global affairs. I'm deeply concerned about the credit crunch. Could mean a cutback in Burns' suppers. I think it's all America's fault. Frank, don't you think Fanny Me was too quick to go down? <laughs> <laughs> Surely that's, that's up to her. Dinner's done, but how did the diners vote? Sibo says six. Come on! <laughs> Very good. OK, Sibo say nine. 920,400 and... Sorry, wrong number. This isn't children in need. Six. For Ronnie, five. For Fanny Mae, my mobile number. <laughs> she kept watching him. He's a wee chinkle. It's been suggested that the next manager at Ibrooks will definitely be Ali McCoist. But let's not be too hasty. Walter Smith got a second shot at it, so why not another ex Rangers manager? Rather than take a risk in McCoist, a rookie, untried novice, the club could reappoint a managerial legend, someone who knows how to fill the trophy cabinet, trounce Celtic and get the fans singing again, someone who plays the game the Rangers way, someone who used to have a moustache. <laughs> Modesty prevents me from saying that's someone's name, but let's just say it rhymes with Graham Gunness. <laughs> As Billy Reid has said, the booze over James McCarthy's decision to play for the Republic of Ireland instead of Scotland are just something that James McCarthy will have to learn to live with. And I, and I can see James now. James, can I just say... Boo! Yeah! And you go, you numpty! Boo! Ah! You can he beat it? I'm Stuart Cosgrove. And this 
is Scottish Cup final sports scene. The Queen of the South v the Cox of the North. First up, the Queens, the Tin of Beans, the Nanjiani Shireens, the Dixie Deans, the Honkin' Latrines, the Syphilis Vaccines. So, Pat, what about that, Pat? What's the chat, Pat? Let's chew the fat, Pat. Well, Stuart, I have to confess that sitting here on these occasions, I feel a bit like Caesar about to pass judgment. Well, here's my judgment on you. Ha-ha! <laughs> One fascinating trivia fact is that Queen of the South is the only football team mentioned in the Bible. Really? Yes. I believe they last won a trophy in 43 AD. Ha ha! That's a braver, Pat. I'm laughing so much, I've almost shat. Ha! But what about the Rangers, the Teds, the Garlic Breads, the Mental Neds, the Living Deads, the Pish the Beds? Are they where it's at, Pat? Rangers? will be feeling pooped. This is their 68th game of the season. But then Queen of the South have had four weeks off, allowing them to rest, recuperate, and sign on at the Baru. I'm sorry to interrupt you there, Pat, but we've reached Jonathan Sutherland time. That's when Jonathan Sutherland goes through the emails. So, over to Jonathan Sutherland. Thanks, Stuart. It's an important fixture. And first up, one emailer says, I'm a neutral, but if Queen of the South win the Scottish Cup, it would be a wonderful thing for Scottish football. And that's from Tim for Life 67 at monthecelic.org. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan Sutherland. So, Pat, can you add to that, Pat? Care to throw the pigeons in beside the cat? Pat, have you any team news? Only one bit of team news, actually, Stuart. I've just heard that you won't be part of the sports scene team next season. Ha-ha! Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, here I am at the Scotland Withdrawal Hall of Fame dinner, where previously such Scottish patriots as... Richard Goff, Andy Gorham, Craig Burley and Duncan Ferguson have been inducted. And I've just spotted the latest addition to the list, Chris Boyd. Chris, a word for BBC Scotland. Aye, what? Could you come over here and stand in front of the camera? No, don't dare moving. OK, we'll come to you. Chris, everyone was shocked when you announced you wouldn't be playing for Scotland anymore. Any regrets? No. I'm not saying I should be picked all the time, but I should be picked all the time. And when George Burley questioned your allegiance to Scotland, was that the worst moment for you? Well, aye, that was a bit below the belt, but it wasn't the worst moment. The worst moment was when Walter Smith called me an enigma, because I'm no an enigma. I'm a Protestant. <laughs> Chris, thanks very much. Well, you know... If somebody had said to me when I first started out all these years ago, you know, Alex, do, do you think that in 50 years' time you'll still be working at being the most successful British manager of all time, you know, I'd have probably said, yes, <laughs> definitely. I mean, come on, seriously, you know, what's the point of chucking it when you're this good, you know? <laughs> I don't mean to sound glib or flippant. But when you're as brilliant as I am, you know, you need to be off your head to chuck it. I mean, you know, I say that with the utmost humility. Well, obviously, the current credit crisis is pretty serious. I mean, something that cost you three million pounds just six months ago today isn't worth tuppence, especially if it's Kyle Lafferty. The credit crisis? No. Does it make any difference to me? Nobody's given me any credit since I've been here on a way. <laughs> Dr. John Reed, in my... Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm not comfortable. <laughs> right, 
Start again. Dr. John Reed, in my recent totally sensational, utterly astonishing exclusive Sukfest with my chairman, Sir David of Murray, His Majesty made some personal remarks directed towards you in person, and I'm sure the fans would like to know by wanting me to ask, what is your reaction to Sir David's totally justifiable comments? Well, what can I say? We all want to be a little indulgent to David on his 20th anniversary, but I'm not entirely sure of the point he's trying to make regarding inference and innuendo. I mean, I hate Rangers. Now, where's the inference and innuendo in that? <laughs> but what about the chairman's assertion that you show no respect for his magnificent club, the sensational Sons of William, the glorious Glasgow Rangers. Pish. Next question. <laughs> Throughout my interview with Sir Dave, he showed unsurpassed dignity by pointing out the dignified silence he has maintained by not commenting on such Celticy things as, as the antics of Arthur Boric, the poppy protest, and the singing of pro IRA rebel songs. Although, uh, when, when you think about it, and then pointing out that he has never mentioned these things, he is, in fact, uh, mentioning them. Look, Chico, no one should be under any illusion that in defending the welfare of Selick and her supporters, I will continue to comment snidely, without fear or favour, or any regard for the consequences. Now, I can't be any more reasonable than that, can I? But, but what about the unwritten law that the old firm never criticise each other in the open? What unwritten law? I've never read it. Finally, uh, <laughs> Dr John, even though right now I am almost literally crapping myself, <laughs> I, I cannot pass up this opportunity for Protestant martyrdom by bringing up Europe and Celtic's exit against a bunch of no-hope Danish duds. As I watched the boys collapse in Alberg, I pissed myself like... I mean, I, 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 I pitied the reputation of, of Scottish football in Europe. Do you... Do you share my concerns? We'll be better equipped for Europe next season after we do four in a row. Four in a row? Do you really think so? Aye, a day. So do I. Uh, Dr John Reed, uh, thank you, and, and, and please, don't hit me. Go in peace to love and serve the hoops. <laughs> Aye, you know, we was just back from Manchester, you know, and we did hear there was a bit of trouble, you know, but, uh, like, boots of chemists got looted, but we never saw a thing. We was too busy getting mementos for the wife. And what did you get her? 17 tubes of toothpaste, 500 plasters and 10 tins of deodorant. The BBC iPlayer. Television pictures on the internet. What's the Scotland international team on the BBC iPlayer? Making the unmissable... ...missable. Oh, OK, you know, so the lad missed a sitter in an important match, but uh, I still weight him very high, so... Believe me, for future squads, I have no problem in in naming Chris Elmo Thingway. Is George Bully the right man for the Scotland job? Well, you know, you you have to question some of the things, you know, daft things he comes out with, you know, like the other week there, you know, he says, uh, hello, is that Aberdeen Football Club? Can I give one of your strikers a game? It's all about, you know. <clears throat> a history of Scotland. Not in the least of a series called Scotland's History that was on two years ago. This history of Scotland is different from the last history of Scotland because there is two years more Scottish history to look back on. As a battle, it was savage, bloody, brutal, barbaric. Two primitive peoples fighting hand to hand in the mud 
and the blood, the gloop and the claw. There could only be one victor. And as night fell across the harsh, battle-scarred earth, Erdre United defeated Ross County in penalties <laughs> to win the 2008 Alba Challenge Cup. <laughs> and so a new land was born, Scotland. A landscape so harsh, cruel and windy that even today, when TV presenters are walking on it, they need to wear big scarves outside their jackets. <laughs> <laughs> the Vikings set sail from Scandinavia and landed here in Scotland. This was the 9th century and an important landmark date was set. It was the last time in history my hairstyle was fashionable. <laughs> of the Vikings who landed, the three most famous were Eric the Victorious, who stole the Pictish crown, Olaf the Brave, who plundered the Caledonian shield, and Mixu the Heavy, who made a balls up of the Intertoto Cup. Scotland's history is full of triumphs against all odds. The Battle of Stirling Bridge, the Battle of Falkirk, and Whitburn's Lee and Jackson winning the Battle of the X Factor. <laughs> but the Battle of Bannockburn was Scotland's greatest triumph. It resonates to this day. Providing the theme for Scotland's national anthem, sung at football matches by drunks who can't keep time with each other. <laughs> they celebrate the legacy of Robert the Bruce, a hero who could take Scotland forward, a man of vision. <laughs> <laughs> a major new multimedia project on television, on radio, online, on your tits. Tell me what the Netherlands, Norway, Iceland and Macedonia already know. Scotland's history. <laughs> you are the ref. How would you react to this scenario? You turn up an hour before kickoff. Do you A, check the turf is playable? B, look closely at the nets to see if they're regulation type for senior football? Or C, have a quickie with a girlfriend in the car park? Well, here we are at Hamden Park. Argentina are the visitors, and there he is. The legend they're all here to see, the one and only Diego Maradona. Shirley, mate, he's the greatest, isn't he? Not only is he the greatest, but he's also unique. Just like Pele. And make no mistake, this is a man who has been so through much. And what a man he is, a true legend. The greatest player of all time, a giant, a footballing genius. I'm just wondering, Charlie, is he really that good? <laughs> Hello, is that Andrew Sachs? Andrew, this is Frankie boy here. Excuse me, listen, you wouldn't happen to have your granddaughter's phone number handy, would you? <laughs> just ask it. 